Welcome to the Dynamo Show. I am James Earth, the Chief Architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. We support experts in living well and doing good around the world. Predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, coaches, all kinds of experts that are living well and they're really putting a solid effort into making their community better. We have three of them here for you today and we are gonna start things off with Donna Keel. Hello, my dear. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness, I am so grateful. You finally made it out to the Dynamo I did, Show. I did, You are just tearing stuff up, I love it. But before we get into what you're doing, because I'm such a fan, let's talk about Donna. Let's take it back a notch and go through the hero's journey, the valleys, the mountains, care to share. So I guess my journey um, has been uh, a evolution since I was a little one. Uh, and the metamorphosis really started in 2010 and 2011. And uh, I was successfully lost 180 pounds and Ooh. shed off yeah. the exterior suit that I'd been hiding behind for all of the trauma and the hurt and uh, finally started becoming my own person. Very good. And uh, that's led me to where I am. And what year was um, that? What would you say? 2010, 2011. 2010, 2011. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So. So the fast uh, five, six years has really been uh, self-development yep. and uh, finding my real purpose yeah. and where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to be doing. And uh, leaving the nine to five job and uh, starting my own entrepreneurship and uh, Oneida Circle. So you were in the corporate space? Yes. Yeah, tell us about that. Years. 20 years. 20 years? I've what sold were everything, everything. What were you doing? Beauty, hair care products, garage doors. Uh, um, you know, if you can sell one thing, you can sell supplements. it all. Supplements. Supplements. <laughs> I remember those Protein. Days. That's what we met. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, yes. that's right. That's yes, right. our relationship goes back a long ways, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Is that company still around? Yes. Oh, yeah, very it's very good. on a small scale, but they're still yeah, there. Yeah, that's yeah. a niche so market. Unique product. Very niche market. Yeah, yeah, yeah for that's sure. Cool. That's cool. What did you learn? What would you say you learned in corporate that you, you've taken with you into this entrepreneurial journey you're on now? Um, that the relationships, uh, building the relationships yeah. is the most important part of um, being successful. Yeah. Uh, building the Isn't sales. Isn't it always that way? Eh? It so is. Business is people. Yes. Right? It's relationships yes. and deep relationships. And the deeper we go, you know, in, in a professional sense, uh, the, the, the better the relationship, the longer the relationship. 100%. Yeah. It's not always the product or the service you're offering. If you can offer them such a solid relationship, mm -hmm. everything else will build around it. Mm -hmm. And the trust is there. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what it's built on. And it on. will withstand the test of time. It does. Right? Yes. I mean, sometimes, you know, you're always like, okay, well, do I go from this supplier to this supplier, and okay, well, maybe this one is a little bit less expensive, but I really love the service I'm service getting over of that here. Person. And I have that connection, I'm going to stay here. That's you know, right. It's always, always better, you know? Very true. It's, it's difficult to compete nowadays. I mean, even in business, I just had this happen to me, you know, not even a week ago, um, where that, that exact thing happened. I had a supplier for print, 
mm -hmm. right? And then I had somebody else come up that was actually in India and basically mm -hmm. completely undercut them. Mm -hmm. However, you're thinking, okay, well now you got to pay for shipping, mm -hmm. you got to pay for, you know, the, 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 the travel time of everything going on and that five-year relationship that I've had, I would put it into jeopardy and they're actually really good friends. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. I actually ended up staying because I'm a big fan of supporting Canada and what's going on here in Canada. And unless we do that, it's going to be very difficult to compete on the global scale. Agreed. Yeah. And it, just because cheaper doesn't always make it better either. So true. So, so, so true. And it's, you, you really have to look at the end game. Mm -hmm. End mm -hmm. game. So. Now, you've taken a big leap not only into entrepreneurship, but also into philanthropy. Yes. You know, I mean, when I think Donna Keel, I think... Uh, you know, somebody that really genuinely cares passionately with a massive amount of compassion for Indigenous youth. Yes. Let's talk Being about that. Being uh, Aboriginal myself, um, I reconnected uh, over the past five years and really started diving into my cultural and heritage past mm -hmm. and learning self-discovery. Um, our uh, youth are going through a huge uh, suicide epidemic right now mm -hmm. and uh, our youth are seven to ten percent higher at either committing suicide or fulfilling suicide. Mm. No child at 10 or 12 years old should even know that word let alone how to carry it out. Agreed. And my mission is to help one child mm. and if I can help one child that opens the door to helping many children and letting them know that there's positivity out there, that um, they're not stuck in a place that, you know, you're bad or you're worthless or you're a drunk, you're a drug addict. There's more to each individual mm. and it's just empowering them, educating them, inspiring them to get to their potential. How do you spot it? How do you see that that youth is at risk? From my experience, um, you can tell that they're withdrawn. Um, they're very sheltered. So introverted? Yeah, very introverted. Um, sheltering themselves, um, staying away from the crowd or getting mixed in the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just you know, pulling them aside, just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them and uh, letting them know that there's something else out there. Mm -hmm. And maybe showing a uh, specific interest in them mm -hmm. and um, shining a little bit of light onto them. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that happen where there's a huge turnaround. That's awesome. And to be able to do that to one child, you know that there's a possibility to do that on a huge scale. Mm -hmm. So it's finding the uh, resources and the uh, power for people to step up and to say, okay, I want to help. Mm -hmm. I'm one person. Mm -hmm. I need an army. Yeah. <laughs> I or, need or, an army. Or, or just <laughs> a really good delivery vehicle. Yes. Right? Yes. You know, how do, you, how do we find something that can really get the message out there across, you know, not only the GTA, but right across Canada? Canada. Because this is a Canada. This is problem. a Canadian epidemic. Right? For sure. And, and that's the right word. It's an epidemic. You yes. know, I, I'm very fortunate to have uh, some very close Indigenous friends that mm -hmm. have taken me to, you know, Six Nations. And mm -hmm. I've seen firsthand what's going on. And Six and Nations is actually uh, one of the most lucrative um, progressive reserves. Mm -hmm out of all of North America, but yet it's still, uh, you know, there's still houses without running water. It's still in the dark and ages. <laughs> yeah, still, oh, and yeah. there's outhouses, and this is Canada. Mm -hmm. That's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And then if you go into the North uh, reserves, the reserves are even more desolate. Mm -hmm. You know, I seen somebody had a post the other day where they were in a grocery store shopping, and a, um, a Tropicana juice was $15. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. You know, when yeah. we can pay two ninety nine. Yeah. That that's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because they're in remote areas, that there's no justice. Mm -mm. So mm -hmm. um, I really had hoped that with uh, Trudeau uh, coming into power, that I would start seeing changes. And in the beginning, there were changes, and now there doesn't seem to be as much as a uh, forefront of Indigenous people. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see that uh, continue to grow. I think it's coming. I, I, I see it's coming. Well, and I think they're on the right track. Yeah, they're on the right track. It just needs to continue to grow. 
it needs to be progressive. It does. More energy it needs does. to put into it. It does. And strong sure. leaders like yourself may be helping them. <laughs> for sure. Right? I'd like to be th- a that's, bigger that's advocate. That's what they need. Yes. They, they need support just like you need support. Agreed. Right? So, Agreed. I mean, if we can, you know, join forces with a bunch of really great people that show that we care and we go to the government and we say, hey, you know what, we're here to support you, support them. That's right. I think that's what they need. And our youth are our future. They are. 100%. All of our youth. We're yes. all Canadian. Yes. Right across the board. 100%. I love it. I love it. Where do you see Donna, let's say, in five years from now? Five years? I'd love yeah. to have an um, old school house that I can transform into um, many different uh, vessels that these kids could learn sound engineering, modeling, creativity. I love They're it. all artistic. Whatever they want. Be whoever they yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. Express themselves any which way they want. Very cool. And Very cool. Uh, to have that self esteem and self confidence building. Donna Keel, thank you pleasure. so so much for coming to the Dynamo Show. My pleasure. I will be there to support you. You know that. We're going to have some fun. We're going to change some kids' lives. We will. This is the Dynamo Show. I am James Ert. Stay tuned. We will be right back after this short commercial break. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. This is episode 31. I am James Earth, the chief architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur, a brand that supports experts, predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, and coaches in living well and doing good. However, today we have an activist on the show. Her <laughs> name is Leanne Mallet. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me on. I am so honored to have you here today. I am such a fan of just your energy. You know, we connected at the My Empire Networking event. We where did. I connected with many of my guests. Yeah. Um, just that room is full of such quality. It's great. It is. It's but incredible. Your light, your light is is, is so. Uh, it's impossible to miss it. Oh my you gosh! So thank it's you. It's radiating. You know, and when you open your mouth and the and the and the voice comes along with the light, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's powerful. It's powerful, and I can see, you know, that that would be a really great asset to have as an activist. But it is. before we get into activism, mm -hmm. let's talk about the journey. The journey. The journey, well, the journey almost starts with activism because I, I grew up in a small town, St. Thomas, Ontario. Yeah, uh, I grew up in London. There we go. If it's yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and uh, my dad was a Ford worker on the line at Ford. Okay. And I wrote my first protest letter when I was nine. Nine? What were you yes, protesting? I was really upset about the Canadian seal hunt. And I was really oh. concerned about, you know, animals and, and kindness and compassion. Yeah. And from there, I was the kid that brought home, uh, you know, stray dogs and, you know, befriended kids that were new to the school. Oh. And so it was just integral. And my parents mm. were, were, were they just, like that? they were not activists. And my mom will say to me, what, what happened that <laughs> you ended up as an activist? And it was I, not in the genes. But it was in the, uh, our family philosophy was that you helped people wherever you could. I love that. And to me, that's what an activist is. Like, yes. we all are activists because yeah. we're all changing the world with every choice, with the way we treat our mm -hmm. kids, with the way that we interact with people. So to me, my parents taught me how to do good. Yeah. And so by the time I was in university, I was involved with the HIV and AIDS movement because mm -hmm. I lost a number of friends oh to AIDS early that. in that time. Mm -hmm. And I was terrified of public mm -hmm. speaking. You? And Come Absolutely. On. Terrified. Okay. I remember giving presentations in front of 15 people and being terrified. Oh, wow. And it was when I started losing my friends to, to HIV and AIDS that I really got that voice where I was mm. able to speak out. And from there, and it's I It's interesting, moved. though, that, that, that purpose that, yes. that, that allows you to... to speak that because now it it's, comes it's not through just you. speaking, it's planting your flag. Absolutely. Right? It's planting your flag and being so 
confident in what that message is, it makes it easy. Well, and I think it's also once you realize you can really affect change. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be huge actions. It can be affecting change, you know, by um, how you connect with your neighbors or yeah. organizing a community get together or, but we all are changing the world. And for me, when I found my voice, I realized mm -hmm. that part of this, you know, extra extrovert really mm. helped me in terms of being able I to like connect that. with extra people. Extrovert. Yeah, like it's my extra, big personality. Extraordinary extrovert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is the craziest activism memory of yours? I think the thing that sticks out for most people is in Clackwood Sound, in the ancient rainforest there, yeah. I uh, sat in a tree for three days to raise awareness and protest clear-cut logging there. Okay. So I was 80 feet up in a 500-year-old cedar 80, tree. Like 8-0? 0 way up wow. on a little tiny platform. Um, I There was another climber that was over on another tree and we had yeah. a big banner uh, strung between us. Ah, cool. And the idea the was say? that we put ourselves in um, the road so that they couldn't cut more trees to move into the ancient forest. Mm. And what ended up happening is that the RCMP had to send up a search and rescue climber. Three days in, they came down and removed us, and we were actually flown out by helicopter when we were arrested for that action. Oh, but wow. it brought what kind of a charge you get for something like it that. It was something like it was just criminal contempt of court because there was just an injunction um, that the you? company received. Pardon me. How young were you? I was 20, 27. So an adult. Yep, I was an adult, an and adult. we we went in there with the knowledge that we were. Um, speaking out mm -hmm. for both ancient forests and to ensure that people knew what was going on there. And it made a massive impact. Mm -hmm. And I, what I learned from that, and what I learned from mentors like Bob Hunter, who was mm -hmm. one of the co-founders of Greenpeace, who was That's one right. of my dear mentors, is yeah. it's getting your message out. Mm -hmm. And in the same way that you do with this, it's critical mm -hmm. because people care. They, they just need to know how to help. Yeah. And that's what's been... Isn't that the key? It's completely key. I, I had key. this conversation. Uh, I remember when I was 26, and I had got this big heart, and mm -hmm. I want to give back, but I have no idea where to start. Right. And I actually came across um, some people in Kerr Village in Oakville mm -hmm. that were doing this big brother type, big sister type program, and it was kind of my first step. It was the Kerr Street Kids program, and I fell in love with it, right? But until then, I didn't really know where to start. Right. So I did a, a survey uh, for uh, a group of kids at the, I was the, the keynote speaker at the YES conference, the Youth Employment yep. Services Conference. And I had a, a survey that basically said, list your three favorite charities. Do you know how many kids out of those 300 that could even pick one? I know. Even one. And see, that's how, you know, this is a perfect, in terms of my journey, I went through being an activist mm. um, and then getting into nonprofit management. I became an executive director by virtue of just being an activist okay. and being in the nonprofit movement. Which movement? And um, first, I ran an organization called Earth Roots that was dedicated Earth to okay. wilderness conservation mm -hmm. and then moved um, into a uh, organization called Ecosource in Mississauga that was founded by Mayor Hazel McCallion. And nice the 70s Whatever. and was expanding into yeah. environmental education in schools and in the community. But what I found, I worked there for 10 years and then stepped out to spend some time with my kids because okay. I had kids in my 40s, so they were little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what I realized as I got into coaching, Are they, like you? they, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Especially my daughter, right? Yeah, the, yeah, and yeah. my son is very, he, he's very sporty, How which of course they is, they um, know it's almost nine and Ruby's seven. Okay. And yeah, so, you have a activist on your hand? yes, absolutely. Okay. Both of them are already doing fundraisers. It's and amazing now just to see, like, even with what we're watching in the news nowadays, how many activists are out there now yeah. just sharing their voice. Because and, I, people and, be, and are starting to see. Yeah, well, and people can see what they can do because mm -hmm. when I started doing my coaching and consulting, what I realized is there's tons of people out there doing good mm -hmm. or they are living well and they want to do good and they're just saying, how do I get involved? So yeah. a lot of what I do now is either Working, I work with um, nonprofit organizations to guide them around philanthropy and mm -hmm. and how to connect that. to more funding and more yeah. capacity. So needed. And I work with entrepreneurs either who are seeking their purpose mm -hmm. so that they can 
run a social enterprise or really get their voice out there. And I also connect people who are living well yeah. with causes that they can already have impact with. So I act as a connector between people and nonprofit organizations. Okay, and you're hired. Yeah. I yes. <laughs> I think we have a it. we have a long journey we're we going to be do. doing together. Do, but I think do. a lot of it is that people do care. Yes. And they want to do Inherently something that's do. really important yeah. and we just have to give them the opportunity to do that. A little bit of love and a little bit of guidance, yeah. you know, and some information sessions and some awareness and whether it's a penny or a dollar or a million dollars or a little bit yeah. of love or just holding somebody's hand yeah. or just allowing them to be recognized. Yes. Just like most people that are in those painful circles that have lost their weight, they just want to be seen. They Absolutely. want to be heard. They want to be loved, mm -hmm. right? And that's our job as, as fellow human beings is, yes. is to love the world. Absolutely. Right? And I worked with Street Involved Kids um, mm -hmm. years ago. And one of the things that one of the kids that I worked with told me is that he had been panhandling on the street. And he said it wasn't that the panhandling that was challenging, it was the people that walked by him and didn't acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. Didn't say, he was fine with a no thank you. Mm -hmm. He was fine with whatever, yeah. but he wanted people to see him yeah. and at least yeah. notice that he was there. Yeah. And that really stuck with me, that I think that, that even that small acknowledgement makes the world a better place. Maybe on a final note, let's mm -hmm. talk three nuggets of Leanne wisdom for those future potential wannabe activists that want to get involved? What would you say to um, our audience? Choose a mission and go with it. So whatever speaks to your heart the most makes a very, just go with that. Um, find something local in your community because you can make an enormous impact with that. And also uh, make sure that you connect with others out there and build that community of people that care about the same thing that you do because you'll have even more impact in doing that. I love it. And we are connected now. Absolutely. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> Thank you very much Leanne, for having me. we are going to connect. Maybe we'll go climb some trees somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is the Dynamo Show. Having a good time. We will be right back right after this short commercial break. Welcome back to episode 31 of the Dynamo Show. I am James Ert, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur, a brand that supports experts in living well and doing good, predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, coaches, and once in a while, amazing talk show hosts like Mr. Brandon Vitalingam. Wow, you said that perfectly. I did, I did. I've been practicing all morning. Thank you for you giving know. it a shot. Oh, goodness, goodness. I am so grateful to have you here. Thank you so, so much, So brother. Brandon actually had me on his show just a little while back, and yep. we had a blast. We really did. So hard not to laugh. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's great to have you finally on the Dynamo show. So we're going to reverse you. the role a little bit here. Which is and different you're in the for hot me. seat now. Perfect. So let's talk Brandon as a youth. Let's go way, way back. Ooh. Let's talk, where did it start? How did the hero's journey begin? Because I know you have a story. Mm -hmm. I do, I do. You know, the, the, the hero's story began in a, in a place of somebody that wasn't the person who you see now. Um, I, my father passed away when I was seven years old, so I was very, very young. Um, so I had my mother, my brother, um, and my brother and myself, our relationship wasn't too brilliant. Mm. And I was, he was taller than me. And one of the key issues that I had is I was very skinny. Okay. I was very small, and as you can tell, I'm a brown dude. I went to school in the UK in an area that Where was a little racist. It was London. London, in right London, down, London, down England. London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I spent some time in Manchester. You did, Manchester. Yeah. Manchester's yeah. a crazy place. Yeah. So you're a Man U fan, right? Altrincham. <laughs> Altrincham. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know yeah. well. Yeah. So um, I was a kind of kid who was uh, sitting in the back of the of the field because yeah. I was I was bullied a lot, mm. a lot when I was in school. And uh, it was very difficult for me because I didn't feel like I had my brother, I didn't mm. have a, a mother, didn't have a father. Just felt really alone. Mm. And uh, so I hid away a lot. Okay. Um, and I used to kind of skip school because mm -hmm. it's better than going to school and being bullied. Mm -hmm. But then what happened after that was um, 
I came out of school, didn't yeah. do too well because obviously I wasn't in there too much. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, 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 I got into things that I shouldn't have. Mm. And sometimes when you, when you have these difficult pasts, you're struggling with things inside that you don't know how to speak to people about. Care to share? What are these things? Yeah, um, well, some of the things that I, I, I got into was, uh, you know, I got into drugs. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I hung around. I know that uh, well. Yeah, right. I, I, I hung around some guys who were. Uh, undesirable. Undesirable. <laughs> <laughs> who, would, who would kind of push me to, um, to smoke. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I'd try to you prove them, it's like, yeah, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm, so I would learn how to do it and do it well mm -hmm. um, so that I could fit in. And the reason mm -hmm. being is because I didn't, you know, because I didn't have the family members really. Yeah. I was in that place. I was seeking acceptance somewhere. Of course. And like I many. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I wanted so to. It's about to respect and belonging. About respect and belonging. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when you have that respect and belonging, then they see you as part of them. Yep. And I felt like this is who I am. Mm -hmm. Now, because I was so easily accepted into that, because if people were successful and yeah. had great careers or had great education, that was something I didn't have. Yeah. So the only people I could fit in was the undesirables. Gotcha. So I got really good at I being an undesirable. You know nothing about it, do you? <laughs> 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 so I became really great at yeah. being an undesirable. Um, to the point well, that, said. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I practiced hard, but it, it got to a point that you keep on doing things and you keep on doing things. This and is then, still in England. This is still in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Did I you got get involved in like you know Chelsea Arsenal. Like, uh, you know, thankfully I was I wasn't really ever really involved in 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 the sports stuff in okay. the hooliganism. That wasn't really Big my over thing. There, especially it's back huge. then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really huge. I'm a Bayern fan, so you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. an Arsenal fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm actually from Frankfurt. My family's from Frankfurt. But okay. It's like enjoying the Maple Leafs. It's like they suck, but they, <laughs> they got like the best fan base ever. Right? Well, you got to remain strong with them, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you just got to stay times. loyal, right? So, totally. Yeah. yeah. But the Champions League, you know, it, it was the only thing we could watch in Canada. Yeah. Right. So you weren't able to watch the Bundesliga up until like two or three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I was watching Bayern like always because they're always in the Champions League. Absolutely. Right? So <laughs> I fell in love with them, and that's become my team now. And that's it. Now I'm looking that's for home. a small flat there, but I love London. Nice. I I really love England a lot. England's I, a I really, great place. I like shopping in London. Oh, yeah. now Last you're talking. Last time I actually went uh, to visit Carl Cox. Uh, Carl okay. Cox at his club. Yeah, he had, he had a club downtown and, you know, party Carl party Cox. back in the day. Remember? Wow, yeah. Carl Cox. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah, Carl yeah. Cox. Yeah, I think at the, the time that I saw him, he was voted one of the top three DJs in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, those are one of those super DJs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, What's like superstars. Soho? Soho? I think it was called Seoul. Soho City? Soho. Soho. I actually used to live in Soho for a oh, while. Okay, okay. Yeah, I had an okay. apartment there. I used to work yeah. at one of London's cool uh, area, top man. restaurants and lived in Soho. Yeah, right so, on. So, yeah, it was crazy. Right on, right on. So when did you come to Canada? I came to Canada about 10 years ago. Oh, so fairly yeah. recent. Okay. Fairly recently. Yeah. Why? I, I, <laughs> actually, it was a vacation. I was actually... <laughs> so, <laughs> You're I, still here. And I'm still here. Yeah. I started off in a, in a position where I was, um, I was trying to set up a business. And the business I was setting up was something that was very alien to me, which was an airline. Okay. Um, but I had a friend who was a pilot, and we were setting up an airline. You're, took you're setting up an airline. An airline. So you're like paying taxes now. So like paying taxes, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so setting up the airline was very interesting because yeah. there's a lot to learn. It took about two and a half years mm. to get all that information together to learn how to do it, what to do, and we're just about oh, to I kick bet. it off. Yeah. Went out to Africa looking for wow. a hub to set it up in. Um, hit a brick wall, and then we're like, okay, I need a break from this. <laughs> okay. Need a break, need yeah. to relax, need yeah. to go somewhere different. So my brother lived here since he was 19 years old. So mm -hmm. I came to visit family, uh, came for a vacation. I wasn't married at the time, um, and my sister-in-law got me married off. No kids that you know of? No kids that I know of. Okay. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I came over, did that, um, and ended up getting married, stayed. Mm -hmm. And I've never been back since, so I was like, look, you listen. You never gone back? Not, not for a visit? Went back for a visit. Yeah. A few times, but yeah. uh, decided to make Canada my home. Yeah. You know, it's a beautiful place. Isn't it the greatest country it's, ever? It's, oh, you, you I know. I love coming home to Canada. I spent time in India. Okay. And when you go to India, you come back with one word, humble. Yes. Humility. Yes. And, and, and coming back to Canada, you really see, especially Toronto. Mm -hmm. In the world right now, I think Toronto is the number one city. This is yes. the most multicultural city. We got it right. Absolutely. We can teach the world a Absolutely. Lot. So I understand yeah. why we're staying. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, it's when you can do a lot with a little, mm -hmm. 
and you can teach people real kindness, yeah. I think it has a big difference. I like the, and the, the huge word impact. real. Yeah. That is kind of the real genuine, yeah, authentic genuine. kindness. Because there's a lot of plastic stuff that people feel, this is the way I should act. Mm -hmm. but there's a difference between real and genuineness. There's a difference between should act and act. Absolutely, hundred percent. Right? The law Correct. of action. Yes, the law of action. The law of attraction <laughs> has action. Has action in it, written right? it. So it's actually. See, in that's there. what we get on so well. I always use that same one too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right on, right on. It wasn't the haircut. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. On. So now, what happened? Like, what was this roadblock? So the uh, the, the roadblock was uh, that we were waiting for some some papers to come through, um, and we were looking to be the Tanzanian. Uh, Flag, national flag carrier. So we were oh, waiting okay. for a few people to, for the bid to come yeah. through. So that was a roadblock there. So yeah. we decided to come over. I needed a break, came over, stayed here. Um, couldn't do anything for three years. I was waiting for my paperwork to come through. Ah. So I was kind of losing my mind. So I, yeah. I picked up a band that was uh, playing in a local pub. A band? A band, yeah. yeah There's a group that was playing in a local pub yeah. in, uh, in Milton. Okay. And uh, friends of my brother-in-law at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically worked with them. Okay. And uh, well, like a manager? Them. Yeah, like a manager. I became you in the band? I, I, was, I wasn't in the band. No. I have been in the band. Do, do you play instruments? <laughs> I'm a percussionist. Oh, yeah, I'm really? a drummer. Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good, very good. I started drumming when I was very, very young. I joined oh, my wow. first band when I was 14 years old. Fantastic. So that was crazy. Are you still in music now? You know, I've been in music most of my life. Yeah. i got to say, music is one of my biggest, biggest passions. My father was a musician. He was a lead singer and a guitarist in his ah. own band. So I grew up, my earliest memories were... Uh, hearing the band rehearse. And then when yeah. my father passed away, my stepfather yeah. was rehearsing too. So oh, he was a singer. Very good. I, so, yeah. I actually just became a singer. You I, did? Yeah, yeah. I'm working Congratulations. together with some really great, uh, great people. Do you remember Snow in Farm? Oh, uh, he's really? He's one of my vocal coaches. Nice. Yeah, so he's nice. Canadian and uh, he might even be doing He's Canadian? On one of my songs, yeah. I didn't even realize he was Canadian. Yeah, yeah, he's here. And I actually got some really, here. really great talent. I can't really release all the names yet, but I got about five or six okay. mega stars, Canadian yeah. mega stars, nice. working together with me to put out this one hit wonder to support kids. We're raising a million bucks for at rest kids. So there's a real reason to this, brother. Yeah, yeah, well yeah. Well done. We'll talk a little bit more about that. We're going to go for a short commercial break. Absolutely. Brandon and James here on the Dynamo <laughs> Show. Stick around because we're going to talk business with Brandon. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am James Earth, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur. We're going to keep things going with Brandon. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Welcome sir. Welcome back to Thank the you. part two of Brandon V. Round let's, two. Let's talk career, because I know you've made a big career change. Mm -hmm. And what's desirable about that career, and why did you do it? OK. Well, there's two key things that have really, really come into my life as of recent. OK. Um, one of them is in the relationship marketing industry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually helping a health and wellness company come in from the States into Canada, into the Canadian okay, market. Okay. Um, beautiful thing about that is that obviously you're helping people, you're giving people a, a path forward to be able to make money, get health, get wellness throughout that. Mm -hmm. One of the other big things that's happened um, since last year was I got my own radio show, as you know. I know. Uh, which you were on. What a fun show. That was a great, great a show. I had a lot great of fun studio. with that. Great show, great Thank host. You. Thank I, you. I, I've been on a lot of shows, but I had a lot of fun there. I gotta Thank you, you so that. much. So way up there. And you know what? I, I always say that I'm the biggest fan of the show because of people like yourself, the guests that we have on the show, just the information Good they guess, have. Man. Great like guests. You're nailing it. Great guests. Yeah. You know, I'm blessed because people like yourself um, tell me about other people mm -hmm. who you connect with. Mm -hmm. So you know that they'll be a great fit for the show. Yeah. So it's called The Breakthrough Show. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is because it's talking about people's lives, about their journeys, about how they broke through into doing what they're doing. Um, and through that, I get to learn a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm the biggest fan because I'm the first person who's being educated. Because a lot of things that I thought, you know, a lot of people come on and teach true. me something different. So I'm always so growing. So much on this show. So much, you know, so much. Stay open. I'm staying open. Absolutely. Allowing the, the information not only to flow Absolutely. to me, but also to flow out to mm -hmm. you know, two million plus people. Totally. 
you know? Yeah. So what would you say is the greatest advantage of having a radio show like that? I think the greatest advantage has got to be um, helping the community. Yeah. Really, it's, it's when you can Why talk did you to pick that community, just out of curiosity? Okay, you know what? I didn't actually pick that community. Yeah, it, it was you. It picked me. Yeah. Um, and I've got to say it's transcending that. Mm. Because the 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 guy who owns the radio show is a good friend of mine, yeah. and uh, care to share with their audience yeah, what the community yeah. is. Uh, okay, so the community yeah. is the Caribbean community. Yeah. So the Caribbean community uh, in the Ontario area, they uh, own a, a newspaper called Toronto Caribbean newspaper and Carib 101 Radio. Uh, the great thing about that is that they uh, got me onto one of their shows yeah. and. They saw what I was doing with yeah. my personal training, which is being a breakthrough partner. Yeah. Uh, and they saw a great fit within the radio station. Yeah. So as I started doing that, it started getting better and better and better. And it was really for the Caribbean community. But what happened, just because of the people who we've had on as guests, they've opened it up to their network of people. So now it's not just for the Caribbean community, it's yeah. for everybody because not only do we have it on radio, so we're streaming on internet radio, but we also have it on Facebook Live as well. Mm. So this stuff gets streamed out consistently. Yeah. The beautiful thing, like people like yourself, you turn around, you tell us about your life, you tell us about your struggles and you teach us something and you give mm. us a nugget. Now. I it keeps on, it, yeah, there's a strong wisdom, nuggets, wisdom nugget that comes yeah. through that just impacts your life in such a way that can really have a paradigm shift mm -hmm. in somebody's life. The beauty of it is that a lot with, with social media and, and the platforms that we have, it keeps on getting replayed and replayed fast. and replayed and growth yeah. so that somebody in some country at some place at the right time is going to hear your message or hear your story and be like, that's what I needed to change my life. Mm -hmm. So just impacting other people's life is what it's all about. Where do you see the show going? Like, like what, what, if, let's say even like a year from now or five years from now, what, what, what does the show look like? Wow, okay, so... The ultimate version of... The ultimate version of the show, show, it's, it's, the break the it's show. gone from a point that it started very early. Mm. Um, it's grown hugely to once upon a time I was looking for people. Now I'm booking months in advance because there's a lot yeah. of people trying to get in the show. Yeah. So I also have people from the UK and people from the States who are trying to get in the show. Nice. So now I'm trying to look at how we can split screen this, but also I'm going to be traveling myself yeah. to keep the show going in different countries at the same time. Mm -hmm. There's already talk about it potentially going to TV as well. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. you well, know, you, very similar to this. You have that presence. You Thank have, you. You have that presence. I mean, even that studio, like, I don't know if it's the green or, mm -hmm. like, I don't know what it is, but yeah. the, the design of the studio, and with you in that yeah. picture of that studio, there's something captivating about it. And the posters you do. Yes, thank like, you. Like, how important is that? Like, why don't you share with our mm -hmm. entrepreneurial, you know, experts out there or yep. those wannabe entrepreneurs that maybe want to get into doing what we're doing. Sure. Or, or, or even just promoting their business. Mm -hmm. How important is having that type of quality marketing material? Well, you know what? The thing that I always think is really important is if you're not prepared to market yourself, nobody's going to know that you're around. Mm -hmm. One of the best things is that when you have posters that are there to be able to express the quality of your business, of what it is you're promoting and the yeah. people who you have on, it not only promotes that person but it promotes your show as well. And it helps other people want to share what it is you're putting out. Mm -hmm. So take some time in putting good quality posters together because I think yours is one of the best that I, that, uh, that I did. That was good. I, and you know what? <laughs> it, it, I wish I had it to show you guys. Um, <laughs> Well, not only that, when you mm -hmm. shared, but it also attracts the individual like myself mm -hmm. that you know wants to be on your yes. show. Yes. Okay. Because of the market, it's like, oh wow, I'm a pro. I appreciate world class. Yes. I appreciate quality. Yes. I appreciate top notch. Yes. And when I look at that, he's got that. It he's attracts quality. He's He dotted the eyes. Yeah. He he's done it in a creative mm -hmm. way. He's taken his time to put mm -hmm. his marketing together. Mm -hmm. He's promoting it well. Yeah. It says a lot about somebody. Absolutely. You see so much crap out there. Yes. People are throwing like, hey, yeah. you know, they're just like talking to their phone. And you or, know what? You, you make you know? a valid point there because if you're not prepared to put the time and effort that it takes to come up with something of quality, then the question really comes to the person who's looking to be a part of that or who's looking at it is that, you know, what's the point of doing it in mm. the first place? Because like, do you really care about this? Or what are you really doing it for? And the caliber of your guests. There you go. Right? The thing is, if you're Huge. putting out crap posters, mm -hmm. the likelihood of you getting crap guests. Exactly. You know, or like lower tier guests that totally. just haven't evolved yet Absolutely. versus somebody that really has those wisdom nuggets that we're looking for 
to allow people to break yes. through with, yes. you know, is, is that's a big difference. Yes. So kudos to you. You've nailed it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens with your show next. It's you know, going to be exciting. Let's talk <laughs> about something really important in your life. You were mentioning it earlier to me. You know, you got something really important going on right now. Okay, so what I've got important going on right now is, as I said, you know, we're, we're bringing a health and wellness company into Canada. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very exciting because, you know, when, when you're given a machete and it's like, okay, go clear the path. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Oh. Go clear Pioneer. the path. Pioneering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that's what we're currently doing at the moment. You know, we spent a long time researching the company mm -hmm. and understanding what their products were, how they work. Who's we? Um, myself and my wife, because we do okay. this together. So we have two beautiful little girls together. We're business partners. We're business partners. Yeah. always have been. That's what really brought us together. How old are your girls? Um, my girls are three and two. I know, the little ones, our hands are full. Yeah. <laughs> Crawl, walk, run, terrorism. So we got one that's like a tornado, and we yeah. got the other one that's just like a little Tasmanian devil. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, been there. Yeah, but yeah. My, myself and my wife, my wife is very powerful, is very strong, um, and it's great because she drives me and I drive her, yeah. and we both have different qualities that we find a way to put in together mm -hmm. to lift each other up consistently and drive our business forward. Important. So, uh, you know, having our children growing up around that, seeing the constant strive for, for betterment and understanding and knowledge and helping other people, that's where it's at. Who inspires Brandon? Who inspires Brandon? You know, there's a lot of people who inspire me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's difficult to say one person in particular mm -hmm. because what I do is I sit with everybody and I've sat with people who are famous, mm -hmm. people who are royalty, mm -hmm. with people who are actors and I've sat with children mm -hmm. and I've learned something from every one of them. The thing I think that's really important to be inspired in everyday life is to keep an open mind. Yeah to keep an open mind and to truly listen to other people instead of talking all the time mm -hmm. and having a headspace that's full Here's is to truly mouth. listen to people mm -hmm. and hear what they're saying and absorb it and it. through that you will truly grow every single day and the craziest places you'll be inspired by people. I love it. On a final note, 30 seconds, give your best three wisdom nuggets that come to your mind. Best three wisdom nuggets is be true to yourself that is very, very important. I think the next one would be believe you can. A lot of people don't believe that they can, but believe you can. And if you don't believe you can, borrow somebody else's belief in you, okay? Because they will be able to feed you and help you have that belief in yourself. The last one is trust in people. There's a lot of people out there that are willing to help you, willing to nurture you, and willing to mentor you. They're out there, trust in people. I love it. Thank you, sir. My friend, <laughs> thank you for coming on the Dynamo Show. My pleasure. Brandon and James jamming away here, having a great <laughs> time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so, so, so much for tuning in again. This is James Ert, out. <laughs>